And so our natural response, and it seems to be pretty universal, is that whenever we are stressed in, in, in any way is to lock up and to maintain our balance by pushing away from the earth. And that is the opposite of what we need to do in order to get to really establish that energetic connection. Because we're kind of choking off our, our, our energy flow when we do that. And also, we also, whenever we lock up the hip joint, lock up uh, one side of the body, it, it tends to lock up the other one as well, unless you're really conscious of being able to let go of that, which is you know, also a, a higher level skill. So being able to, uh, to free up your, uh, your, the, the quad of your supporting leg is also um, key to being able to uh, free up the insubstantial leg and to be able to do things with that, i.e. take a step or make a kick or, or lift a knee or whatever. So uh, let us stand up and let's take a look at that and explore it. What I'd like you to do is to get a chair um, or something to, something to support. You can use the back of a couch or, or something if, whatever, if uh, you don't have a chair handy. I'm going to use a chair because the key I have found to training this stuff is to bypass the normal stress response that comes when you're afraid you're going to fall over or you're afraid you're, you're going to lose your balance or even something as simple as, as be uh, embarrassed that you, you shook, that you didn't, you didn't look cool doing it. So being able to have something to support you then allows you to explore a little deeper what we're talking about here. So the key we start with is, is the, the ball of the foot. So you, if, uh, for those following at home, you'll remember that that is that, that spot there, that big knuckle there on the inside of your foot along the big toe line. And we're using that as our, our focal point. That's, that's the point of orientation. It doesn't mean we're just standing on that and pivoting on that. It means that, that the, the weight is spread throughout the foot, but that is our, 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 our locating point. Okay, so we, we feel that. And then we get the, uh, and the idea is to then set the knee. Okay, so once you feel that point there, you bring your knee. So pick up your back foot. That really emphasizes the, you know, the the substantial leg. So you want to feel that the knee is unlocked, and if I, you look at it from the side, you can see that my knee is just slightly it, it's it's unlocked, but it's not so far forward that it's it's over the toes. It's you know, over the first third of the foot, the front third of the foot. Look at, looking at it from the, from, the, from the front there, you can see that, that the, the knee is, is lined up so that I'm centering around that, that ball of the foot. So what we're gonna play with first is to just really focus on that. So by picking up, you know, your heel and just really allowing your weight to settle into that can give you a, a lot of feedback about where your edge is in terms of your support structure. Where that, that the firmness, the, the confidence that you have. So just bring your knee, uh, actually, uh, yeah, bring your knee out toward the, the, your, 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 the outside of your foot, toward the little toe, and just get notice what that does to your balance, to your, your connection with the earth. And then bring it back to the center line and just feel that connection and feel the, the firmness of that. 
And you may notice that your body resists this. And I'm not just speaking to the people who are you know, present here. Now, I'm talking to anybody who might be watching this on YouTube as well. So it notice that there is a difference whenever you rock your body out to the side and have your weight over the outside of your foot. And it has a tendency to destabilize. You also may notice that your body fights it. You know, you might tense up and do that. That's part of the reason why we have the chair here. That's part of the reason we got the support of some sort so that we can uh, really get that feeling of it because this is not natural, what, what I'm asking you to do. This is, nature didn't prepare you for this. This is something different. Nature wants you to push away. That's, that's what we've all been doing since we learned how to walk. And we're saying, no, no, we, we're going the opposite direction. We are, we are bypassing our natural instinct to shove away and to tense up. We're saying, no, no, we're going down. And that means that we have to build up the supporting network, the muscles and the connective tissue and the bones that are underneath this that, that are giving support. And that is it's what I consider a yin support. That is, it's, it's holding you up rather than pushing away. So it having that and learning to really... To, to practice this to the point where you start to feel the, you know, feel the burn. You, you want to feel that, that, oh yeah, you're doing some work there. Your muscles are actually, they're, they're having, they're having to work to, to do this, but not in the way that they're used to. It's not like in, you know, if you're, you're, you're pushing away and like when you're doing a, a squat or something like that, it's, it's, this is for, ah, oh, we're sinking down. And so now just push your, but to keep your foot over the, 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 you feel that ball of the foot there, but, but move your butt out to the side so that you have, you can notice that if I drop a plumb bob down, it'd be like, you know, be a couple of inches wide of my, the outside of my foot there. And, and notice that there's tension on the outside of your body. Many of us will have, have a lot of excessive tension in the iliotibial band. That's a band of, of tissue, the muscles that that connect your knee to your hip on the outside. And that's because we lock up the hip joint and we shove out to the side. So we want to ah, bring that back in and notice that, oh, the iliotibial band gets a chance to take a break. It's not being stressed as much. So having that feeling there, that that relaxed sense of sinking into the leg then allows us to free up the quad. So the quad, this hip joint, you know, the inguinal crease is, is where we are really focusing on this place right here, getting that so that the muscles there, and you can actually feel into that and notice if you are tense there at all. If that's nice and soft and gooey, then you're, you're probably doing it correctly. So you wanna have that lined up. So, you notice that the, the line of force, if I drop straight down through my body's mass, it's on the inside of my foot. If I take my body's mass and push it out to the side, then it takes a lot more energy to, to maintain my structure. So I want to, being a lazy guy, I want to uh, follow the path of least resistance there and follow the line of force there. The advantage of that, of course, is to, when I do that, I am replenished. Energy is replenishing the whole system as I do that. Everything is filling up and at the same time, emptying up. So there is a flow. So energy is moving through and it's, it's coming, bubbling up and it's, it's also sinking down and moving out and, and that constant cycling of energy is what we're going for. We're not storing chi. We are learning how to handle increased chi flow. So we're never using much of our own personal energy. We are using the big chi to, to make all this happen. 
So we have getting that that sense of, of, of confidence there in that leg is is a real key part of that. So let's go to the let's go to the other leg. Let's go to the left leg now, because the right leg might be getting a little tired. And you want to do the same thing here. You want to feel the ball of the of the left foot <clears throat> and um, you know, set the left knee so that it's slightly forward of vertical. So that your weight going down, you're feeling it in the front part of the foot, in the big toe part of the foot. It's like you're you're getting ready to dive off a diving board or something like that. You're, you're feeling that, ah, that bounce there. And then you are feeling that you're setting that, so that establishing your relationship between your knee and the ball of your foot establishes this, this post that enables us to root, enables us to, to connect to the earth in a way that we're able to hold our position in space and generate energy from that position. So having my hand on this then allows me to, ah, so push away from the earth, I really get the feeling of that rising up and then ah, sinking down and really feeling yourself. When you sink down, you're not releasing it. You're not pushing the knee out. You are releasing here. You're, you're sitting down into your leg. And so you really want to feel the ball of the foot there. Feel the weight throughout the foot, but you particularly want that focal point in the ball of the foot. And same thing here, I want you to kind of just push your knee up, bring your knee away from the center line and more out to the outside of your foot and notice what that does. Because a lot of times when we're moving, we're, we're, the knee is flopping around and this causes a lot of knee problems. So if you bring the knee back to the center line, notice that the knee almost disappears at least in terms of stress, in terms of, of, of muscular tension. You'll feel something in the thigh because that's what muscles are supposed to do. They're supposed to, they're supposed to support us. They do the work there. But we're, it's a yin support. You wanna feel that. You're still feeling weight in your heel, but you're also primarily focusing on that ball of the foot. And push your butt out to the side. Lock that up and just notice how that affects everything, how that tightens up that iliotibial band. And I take it back to center. And if, and if you've heard this stuff before, please bear with me because if we want to take it out of the intellectual realm and really bring it into the body mind. We do that by take it just a little bit past your point of comfort until you can, you know, you start to say, oh, when I go outside of my comfort zone, where do I go? What, what, where do I, where do I take it? Because this is the, this is the key, because this is where, you know, let's say if someone is pushing on you and push hands, do you lock up or do you, ah, take it in and receive that energy? You know, if you're, if you're executing a kick, do you, Push away and lock up so that you can then you can kick out, or do you ah sink down in order to be able to kick? So this is what we're it's like I say it's not natural, and so it's spending a little time examining these ideas and really feeling into your body. And I'm breaking down very simply so that people who have not necessarily been following along in this series, or just tuning in for the first time, can also get a chance to explore this. These are these are really fundamental ideas that that make it uh, that make it work. It get the it gets the chi circulating, provides a firm support to the lower body. It, allows the insubstantial leg, the leg that's not supporting, to be able to relax and move freely. 
and allows your upper body to relax because you are you're not having to hold on because you don't trust your structure. And also, if you can get it so that this becomes your default setting, you immediately go there. Someone touches me and immediately I feel sun qua. It's not like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? It's like, ah, there's a there's an immediate response in my body. I feel that. And I know only because I know that that's going to work better than if I tense up. Tense up makes me brittle and hard and not rooted. Whereas if I ah, if I get sung qua, then I'm I'm much uh, I'm much more able to to hold my position and move freely from that position, be able to explore other options. It also has a tendency to calm you down. To by feeling into that yin support, you have a tendency to calm and center yourself. It makes everything more, more powerful. You have that effortless power that comes from that. It's easier to create chin from whenever you have that energetic connection. So using the left leg now, we're going to feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and then push away, and then uh, sink down, and then spiral down to the left a little bit. And so notice that when you're doing that, where when you spiral down, you're releasing the quad, and you're turning at the same time, where is the, the contact point in your foot? Where do you feel that? So this is a real key point here, like, Ah, you're you're feeling into that. Do you maintain that that connection to the ball of the foot, or whenever you turn, do you, do you lock up and pull the weight to the outside of the foot? So just do that again. So just feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and then push away, and then uh, spiral down to the left. And notice if you are maintaining that contact to the inside of your foot. But that's where you're getting your, your support from. And then from that, pick up your right foot and place it forward. Empty step, you're not putting any weight into it, but you're just picking that up. Can you do that without shaking your body around? And that's why the chair comes in handy. Because you're looking say, okay, where do I cheat? When I do that, when I step back, where do I cheat? Where do I, uh, you know, feel into that? So then by doing this, you get a chance to explore. You push away, sink down, spiral down, pick up the heel and step forward without any weight in that. But you're not transferring that. You're just holding on to that. Your knee, knee is staying set. And then you pick up the foot and step back. Now we're gonna do it with the right foot. Still keep the chair over on your left. So turn the foot out a little bit, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and take a moment and really find that connection. You wanna feel through your body, feel the power connection through your body so that uh, when you push away and then uh, spiral down, you're maintaining that power connection there and feel how that your insubstantial leg really empties out, you know, and you can, it gets nice and fluid. So check that. Holding onto the chair gives you the freedom to explore that, okay? So then you pick up your left foot and step forward and just place it down. And the idea is, can you be fluid? Can you totally relax that? and you're getting less and less dependent on the chair as you do that. But keep the chair around for a little bit so that you're feeling the connection with the, with the right leg again. You pick up the knee, you pick up the foot, and just hold that. So here we have the knee up, so we're feeling that. And how much are you dependent on this 
chair to keep your keep your center, keep your balance. This is something you get to work on. This is you can spend a long time trying to do it without a prop, and it will you're going to probably pick up a lot of bad habits when you do that. But if you have a prop there, you can then say, oh no, what's, how can I maintain that energetic connection throughout? And you'll notice that maybe your leg is, is a little fatigued from, from just doing that simple, that simple one step there. You may be able to run five miles, but, but whenever you go to this yin support, you might find yourself like, oh, that's, that's hard work. So do it again. So you push away, sink down, spiral down to the right and pick up the left knee and place the foot down. Pick up the knee and step back. And I go back to 50-50. And just stand there, just, just allow your hands to come down to your sides and just feel into the energetic connection. Feel into the chi flow that you've generated just for this, just a few minutes of, of this exercise. So one of the things we're, we're learning to do by doing this is learning to tolerate an enhanced chi flow. Because that is really at the core of not just the internal martial arts, but also the whole Chinese model of health is get lots of chi and circulate it well, is really the, you know, you can break both down into those two key components there. Lots of chi and circulate it well. So right now you got a lot of chi circulating. You're feeling it in your hands. You're feeling the throbbing, pulsing, tingling. There's the hands are, are definitely connected up. 